Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 20. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cash Flow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. Hello out there. Glad that you're here for another episode of the Cashflow Diary podcast. Uh, this episode it could be the episode that you've been waiting for. It is, yes, uh, the time for me to answer your questions. I've been able to gather a number of questions range in various difficulties, various ranges, and I will be answering them on this particular show. Hopefully it won't go too long, especially if it's not your question. Um, but speaking of questions, we have a brand new question line. So now you get to dial in, uh, ask your questions, leave a comment, leave a testimonial. If something that we've said or that you've heard uh, on the show has helped you in some way, feel free to let us know. Uh, or if you, again, just have a regular question, it's 800-689-1764. Again, that's 800 689 1764. You can dial the number, leave a message. We will do our best to make sure that your question gets answered as fast as we possibly can. Uh, do remember, though, we can't get to them all because there's a lot more of you than there are us. And in the meantime, if you've got some questions about wholesaling, which is simply the process of being able to buy properties at a discount, sell them at a discount, and using this information, uh, that's Pretty much how I got started in real estate, more or less, was able to do a number of transactions inside of 72 hours. Then I typically, you know, earned, you know, a couple thousand dollars all the way up to $26,000 or so per transaction. And, you know, if you want to learn how to do that, we're giving that away. We're actually running a new promotion now. So go over to learninvestingnow.com. That's learninvestingnow.com. And we're doing two things for you. One, you're going to get the e-course that starts with um, being able to learn how to do wholesaling. Look, we're going to teach you. I'm going to show you how to buy properties at a discount and sell them at a discount using none of your own money or credit so that you can begin to do real estate using none of your own money or credit. And then secondly, uh, for those of you, you're going to, when you go over to the website, we're asking that you leave a review for the podcast. When you go over to learninvestingnow.com, you'll see the directions. It's very, very clear. Just go over there, follow the directions, leave us a review on uh, the, the uh, iTunes uh, page here. And what will end up happening is that you'll get a free month of our premium membership. Now, you may have noticed that you don't know what's in the premium membership. That's why you got to go over to the website, learninvestingnow.com. But here's an idea. Uh, I often answer lots of questions of our for our premium members, and you are going to get one month for free. That's normally $79 a month. It is absolutely yours for free for going over to learninvestingnow.com. So keep that in mind. Um, for those of you listening, <laughs> normally we just jump right into subjects in our cash flow quote, but uh, listen to the pilot episode number one, and you can get some background on the show. But we've got so many new things happening, you know, with the new promotion, new phone number. I, I want everybody to know about it. So, and again, I'm excited. Hopefully you're excited. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, here's our quote for this particular episode. It says, if money is your hope for independence, you will never have it. The only real security a man will have in this world is a reserve of knowledge, experience, and ability. The fun part is, is that comes from Mr. Henry Ford. <laughs> and yes, the same one whose name may be on a car that you drive. Uh, I know I had a 99 Thunder, or a, what year was that? It was a Thunderbird. I can't remember what year it was. And then I also had a 99 Taurus. That's what I know that's what I was thinking about. So I have definitely had my share of Ford. Some people call them found on roads dead. But here's the idea behind this quote. Uh, I like what Mr. Ford has to say. I, I like it because a lot of times we spend uh, our most precious asset time chasing money. However, 
I think what he's also saying is that we should invest even more time chasing knowledge, experience, and gaining new abilities. One of the ways to gain those new abilities is to ask questions and get those questions answered. I know that that's helped me a lot. So I'm going to do my best here to help you with some of the questions that have been asked. Um, So this question first comes from one of our, not only is she a premium member, but she's also uh, inside of our wholesale mastermind group. We occasionally run a wholesale mastermind groups where You know, for 12 weeks, we sit down, we instruct you on how to go out there and buy and sell some real estate uh, in your local market. And we do it all online so that you have the ability to go out there and, and, you know, transact business. And, you know, if necessary, I get on the phone and help you. Um, And in this particular case, we're going to discuss her question right here because I love it a lot. It, the question is, do I schedule closing sessions separate with your sellers and, and do I have them come in one at a time or your in, and your in buyer come in uh, at a separate time? So basically what she's asking is like when it comes down to is when you are doing a wholesale transaction, there's an A side of the transaction where you as the wholesaler, you are putting a property under contract with a person who is selling the property. And then there's a B side of the transaction. Now you're the seller. You're finding a person who's going to buy the property that you just put under contract from you. And what she's asking is, when I do wholesale transactions, do I have the people come together or separate, et cetera? Um, She also goes on to say, do you schedule both your seller and end buyer to meet at the closing table at the same time? And then she asks, do I attend closing sessions? Now, if you're not familiar with the word closing sessions when it comes down to transacting real estate one of the things that you do is you have to open up what's usually called an escrow it's just uh, escrow simply being a third party uh, that is watching over the transaction to make sure all the monies and all the uh, obligations that are supposed to be met under the contract are indeed done and they facilitate that transaction. There's something similar to a cash register, if you will. So like when you're standing in line, you've already chosen the one that you want. You're just standing in line waiting to pay for it uh, so you can walk out the door with your receipt. This is kind of what escrow does for you is that they help make sure that you get what you paid for (laughs) in this process and that the seller receives the money uh, that is good legal tender uh, as well. And so in this particular instance, it is possible sometimes to close transactions in person. It is uh, sometimes when you're coordinating these things, you may want to be in person with the individual that you're closing transactions with. In my particular case, uh, I did not. I normally, as a matter of course, do not attend any sort of closing sessions. I tend to use uh, documents via FedEx or UPS and get originals that way over to title. And fortunately, most documents can be signed in what is called counterpart, meaning you can sign your part and send in your original and then say your seller or buyer or the person on the other end of that transaction can sign their part and send in those originals. Now, while there's usually not going to be one original with both signatures on it, what the the title company and escrow companies can work around is being able to close using uh, that particular technique. So sometimes if you are investing, say, in a state uh, that you do not live in or in a country maybe uh, you do not live in or in a place you don't want to go or you can't get to at that moment, maybe you're on vacation, I don't know, something, and you still need to close that transaction, it is very, very possible. Um, so, you know, to answer your question, you know, I I don't necessarily mind when they come in. I do try to negotiate the day so I know I want to, you know, negotiate at least, you know, whatever day I want them to close. I typically, personally, prefer to close on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays uh, because I don't know about you, but somehow Mondays are over full and Friday nobody wants to think about closing there or thinking about the weekend. Uh, I personally like to close on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays when possible. And um, it doesn't really matter to me, you know, which if the seller and buyer meet each other, etc. In fact, one of the unique things about being a wholesaler that I think is very cool is that you do get to play both sides of the fence. 
and you get to build a resume and or referrals and or clients on both sides of the fence so that you you never know when in the future you, that might begin to be in hand or come in handy so and uh, that would be the question so let's go on to the next question that we have um i'm showing let me see what we got here got it uh, we've got another question from a gentleman uh, that I've been able to work with and mentor for an, a little while here. Uh, and specifically, he's got some questions because he is in the process of learning how to raise private capital. And for those of you who, you know, have always wondered, how to, can I get money? Who can I get money from? Uh, what would it take? Uh, what we are putting together uh, for those of you that want to know is that you will soon see if you're already on the list, etc., uh, you will soon see a, a mentorship group very similar to what the other group was uh, for wholesaling. We'll do the same thing as it relates to uh, raising private capital. It'll be 12 weeks. And my intent is to stick with you uh, during that 12-week period to coach you through how to raise at least your first $100,000 in that 12-week period or less. And what I'm so excited about is that I know in our wholesaling group, it's only been about five weeks and uh, it looks like this week is going to be the week where we have people uh, begin to earn uh, enough money, more than enough money to pay for the wholesaling group. But most importantly, just like Mr. Ford was saying, uh, money is not her hope. Money, uh, she she now has a world, uh, she has a reserve of knowledge, experience, and ability. That reserve of knowledge, experience, and ability is what she gets to use now over and over and over again. So let me get over to this uh, question here. It says, as I purchase my first building, say less than 20 units, which structure would you recommend or is it a function of my investor's preference? Okay, so let me back up a little bit. Uh, in this particular case, we're talking about purchasing something other than a single family house. And he is stating that he's going to purchase, say, less than 20 units. Now, uh, as a matter of course, I, you know, when you're going out there, if you've never uh, purchased a multifamily home or any sort of rental real estate, uh, be wary, um, especially even if you have purchased single family homes before, that a multifamily building operates, works, lives, breathes, and acts completely differently. Even if you've had 20, 30, 40, 50 single family houses, it's not the same as one location with 20 units in it and it just so keep that in mind and I think that's wise first of all that you're looking at you know something say less than 20 units uh, which I think is good and you know uh, because it's you're going to experience a learning curve when it comes to the whole uh, management so uh, which structure I would recommend now in this particular case, there are typically two or three different structures uh, that I like to use when you raising private capital and or structuring deals, etc. And w while we're not going to discuss all of those structures uh, during this particular session, uh, the question, the part of the question that I definitely want to uh, hone in on is, or is it a function of my investor's preference? Now, uh, in my opinion, when you are, there are four components to every deal, and most of you have heard me say this, you know this already, it's knowledge, time, money, and credit. And what you are typically bringing to the table is the knowledge and the time. Now, sometimes you could be the money or credit, and some of you are, and that's great. Um, so, it, it, you know, I'm not down on one and up on the other. All four are needed. Uh, the good thing about real estate is that you don't have to have all four personally, now, you just have to be able to leverage to obtain access to uh, the other. So you don't need to own or control. Uh, you don't need to own in all of them. You just need to control uh, the ones that you need or lack so that you have the ability to go out there and execute the deal. So what does that mean? That means when you are out there doing a deal, in my opinion, you always want to be the one that is in control. Specifically, if you're the one bringing the knowledge and the time to the table. Notice I said um, knowledge and time, not the money and the credit. Now, oftentimes, you don't want to, because this is the one of the largest mistakes that I made at the beginning, was chasing 
uh, the dollar, more importantly, chasing whatever my investor said he or she wanted to do, and that's what we did. And that that was such such a challenge. Don't do that. Uh, you know what it is that you want to do with the property. You know what type of real estate business that you want to have. And you, it is your job to tell them, tell everybody what it is that you do. Tell the marketplace what it is that you do. And just because someone has the 200, 300, 400, 50,000, whatever it is, uh, dollars that you need. That doesn't mean they tell you how to run the business, okay? That doesn't mean they tell you how to do the fix and flip. Yes, it's their money. I'm not saying it's not their money. I'm saying, for example, and to use a very easy example for most people, um, some of the best private investors typically tend to be higher income earning um, individuals who who are lacking time or the desire or or the ability the knowledge to go uh, of how to actually do the transaction so what does that mean that means that's what you're bringing to the table it's like it would be like if you were a doctor <laughs> imagine this uh if you were a doctor and then i come to you and start telling you how to operate on patients because i'm the one who paid for the operating room what what is my paying for the operating room have to do with my expertise as a doctor? It, it well, yeah, you probably pick, figured out that it, it has nothing to do with it. And that's the same thing here. Uh, you as the transactional engineer, you're the one who's out there who should know the marketplace, who should know the trend, who should know the job base, the job mix, the occupancy. You're the one who should be developing the play and has the team and is willing to develop the team if you don't have those resources. That's what you're doing. And you want to make sure that you have control because one of the most important things to have is control or more importantly, a parachute or safety net. If things do not begin to go well, you need to be able to react quickly and unemotionally to the situation so that you can preserve the capital that you've been entrusted with. And not having done that uh, in one particular transaction, I can remember, uh, ended up costing hundreds of thousands of dollars because I did not maintain control. Because again, in my head, and as a younger investor, I will say, you know, I thought that that's what, you know, that's how you had to do it. They have the money. So what, you know, they, you golden rule, right? He who has the gold makes the rules. Well, here's the truth of the matter, in my opinion. Knowledge is the new money. Just like Robert Kiyosaki says, knowledge is the new money. So just because you have slips of paper that have numbers written on them and they have presidents that I recognize and, you know, that other establishments accept in exchange for goods or services, that doesn't mean you have money. Knowledge is the new money. What you know how to do is what releases the power that money has. And that's the whole a magic of it is that the money can just sit there and pile up, but it doesn't do anything until you give it some direction. And that's your job is to understand the direction that money must take in order for these things to happen. So that's really, really cool. And what it also means is that as you invest in your financial education, as you continue uh, to read books, listen to podcasts, and continue to grow, you become more valuable to the marketplace because not only do you know more, but you have more experience, just like Henry Ford was saying. See, most of us get stuck at knowledge. We go pick up a book, we go to a seminar, we listen to a podcast, and boom, that's it. But we do nothing with it. So you have to actually go out there and do something with the knowledge. Go out there and test it. And so that you can know for your own experience how well it works or how well it, uh, or if it doesn't work. So even just because it works doesn't mean you must use it, especially if you don't like the way that it does work. You can build your better mousetrap, but test the existing ones first before you go trying to reinvent the wheel. Okay. And what's really amazing about this is that you end up in a situation to where you gain a new ability. Maybe the new ability is just learning how to persevere. That is a skill set and an ability that's necessary for an entrepreneur and very, very necessary as it relates to a real estate entrepreneur, which 
uh, is something that you know many of us listening uh, are striving to become better at. Uh, as many of you know already, that that's the part of um, parcel of the reason for the Cashflow Diary podcast is so that my <laughs> kids have a shot uh, at being able to know uh, this same thing and being able to develop their own knowledge, their own experience, and their own ability as well. So hopefully uh, so those are some of the questions. Again, if you've got a question and you want it answered, uh, we, didn't, we do take breaks from time to time to answer questions. So it's 800-689-1764. Dial in, leave a message. We'll do our best to get to it. Hopefully it's not overly complicated. Um, and even if it is, that's okay. <laughs> because those actually give me, uh, those actually become fun and maybe they actually become something more than just a question and you might even get a phone call from me. That would be cool. All right, uh, so let's get over to the cash flow question uh, as we tend to wind down. Uh, the cash flow question from last week. Last week's question was, what is the name of the legal entity that is most often used by small business owners to control self-employment taxes? And we did have a correct answer. That's right. Uh, ben, you are out there. You sent in the email. We have an autographed copy of my book, my upcoming book, um, J. Massey's Cashflow Creation System, How to Create Wealth in Any Economy. It is coming to you. You did indeed get the correct answer of S Corporation. S Corporation. That S Corporation, while many people you know, use it for asset protection, as you uh, well should, uh, one of the unique benefits that it betrays and bestows upon the wielder, if you will, is the ability to con split your salary or your income but into a salary as well as into a dividend. And one of those two is subject to self-employment tax. The other is not. And again, uh, I am not attempting to be your, you know, tax repair, legal guy or anything of that nature. However, check with your competent keyword, competent legal attorneys, uh, legal and, and uh, bookkeepers. They understand this technique and that can save you tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And in the not too distant future, we'll get one of my most favorite uh, CPAs and accountants here uh, on the show, and I think uh, you'll enjoy that as well, uh, so that you can, again, hear from his own perspective why the S Corporation is so powerful. All right, so let's get over to this week's question again. Make sure that you send in your answer to cashflowquestion at cashflowdiary.com. Again, that's cashflowquestion at cashflowdiary.com. The first person to send in a correct answer will get an autographed copy of my upcoming book, uh, Jay Massey's Cashflow Creation System, How to Create Wealth in Any Economy. It's a book that right now that I'm writing because uh, everything that I've done has been in this supposedly down negative economy, and we've been able to transact hundreds of uh, properties and pieces of real estate across many different states using none of our own money and credit. And we're going to break down our entire business model in that book. Make sure uh, that you pick it up if you don't win. So here is the question for this week. It says, what period of time is ROI usually measured over? What period of time is ROI usually measured over? Now, I purposely not telling you what ROI means and if you have been listening to the podcast uh, for a while, you probably remember a very similar question, which already has the answer in it. So uh, the good news is, is that this is kind of an open podcast test. <laughs> so you can go back and listen to some of the other episodes and be able to uh, get the correct answer. Again, send in the answer. Don't forget your address because we can't mail you a book through the email. All right. We can't mail you a book through the email. Anyway, uh, it's been a good episode of answering your questions. Looking forward to receiving more of your questions on our brand new question line. I'm very excited about that. And um, if you want to make sure that you do get some of your questions answered, again, that number is 800-689-1764. And for now, I want you to remember this. Knowledge 
is power once it's applied. Until next time. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.